Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. I am so excited to be back with you today. It's been a wonderful four days with friends and family down at the river. We are now back and have been um, well rested. So I thought today would be a great day to wrap up a little project that I started. In my previous video, you'll recall that I used two of the inks um, one that I had just gotten in the mail the stays on and this is a, a solvent ink that is permanent and then this is just my archival pigment ink from Michaels that I got both in black and then the two Cricut pens and I wanted to see which ones would play nice with alcohol markers so these are the finished uh, projects. So this was the balloons and some of these are the Hobby Lobby alcohol markers and some of them are my Ulta new markers. It actually turned out okay. That green on camera, it looks a little too dark, but it's just a dark forest green. And so this will eventually become a card. And then we had the party hats and I just did a few little elements on this one as well. So some of this is all to new markers, some is Hobby Lobby. And overall, both markers did quite well with the Cricut pens. So if you are someone who loves your Cricut and you have a lot of pens, I did test out both of these. This was the balloons and this was the party hats and both of these markers played very well with my alcohol markers. And then in this, um, in this card here, the candle was done with, um, I'm sorry, over here, we have the um, Recollections stamp ink with all to new markers and the Recollections ink with the Hobby Lobby markers. So overall, the Recollections ink did do okay. This particular image, when I first stamped it, I don't think I let it dry completely, so I had just a slight bit of kind of bleeding out over here, which was corrected through the alcohol blending, so that was fine. And this image that had been able to dry a lot longer, this worked really well. So. Both markers played well with this particular ink pad, so that was a win. And then the new stays on, and mostly I got this for things like vellum um, or, or acetate, things that are a little more slick that need some kind of uh, really permanent ink. But I went ahead and tried it out with this particular stamped image. So we did a cupcake liner frosting and a candle. These are the Hobby Lobby markers. These are the Alta new markers and these all played nicely well with the stays on as well. So in the meantime, my inks that were part of the original experiment finally arrived. I am so excited. So what I want to do today is I want to stamp three more of these, color them out, and then I want to turn the whole thing into a card. So I have the VersaFine pigment ink for fine details and it's an onyx black and it just basically says that it brings out the finest details. It's long lasting pigment ink pad, perfect for using watercolors to color stamped images. So I'm hopeful that this plays nice with the alcohol markers. Then I have the Memento ink, and I have seen lots of card creators use the Memento ink and the VersaFine, so that's why I wanted to try them out. The fade-resistant fade dye ink, <clears throat> when you turn this over, um, it does say that it dries on all paper surfaces, including coated and textured papers. So um, it says when dry, the stamp impressions are water resistant. So I think this will also play nicely. And then this one here, this is by Ranger. It's archival acid-free permanent waterproof ink in jet black. And this one actually even says that the archival inks can be used with water-based dye inks, acrylic paint, and watercolors. And it says that it is ideal for stamping over alcohol inks. 
So this specifically mentions that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring in, um, we're gonna open these, we're gonna bring in a card panel and then I'm just going to, this is the Sweet Birthday stamp set from Simon Says Stamp that I got when I received my card kit. And I'm just going to pull this particular um, lollipop image out. It's just so cute. And then we're going to go ahead and stamp three more images here. So let me grab my Misty. I am going to... Put this down here. Actually, I need to turn that over before it gets put in the wrong spot. All right. And I'm going to bring that up. And I'm going to make sure this is really well seated in that corner because I like to stamp one time, then color, and then stamp one more time. Let's go ahead and just start with the Versafine. And we'll just do one of these at a time. And then I think, let me grab this little pin here. I'm going to put a V in this corner for Versafine. That way we'll know which one we stamped with. Yes, my Misty is upside down backwards. I like to open it like a book. So, okay, we're going to stamp this down. And something that I noticed is the Memento ink, the Versafine, and the Stazon, they are all made by the same company. Okay, so this is the Versafine, and I'm just going to let this sit for a minute. I want to make sure this is really dry before we um, color on that. So, and I'm going to leave this here. This way, when I'm done coloring, I can come back and stamp one more time, and it'll make a really crisp um, impression over the alcohol inks again. It looks really great. So while this is taking a moment to dry, I'm going to grab some alcohol markers. I think I'll go with this blue. We'll use that with Altenu. And I will use a my one from Hobby Lobby, the yellow, and then I think I will use green. Yeah, I think I'll use green with Altenu. This will give us a total of three Altenus and two Hobby Lobbies. Or I could do the, I could do a combination of um, the stems in different ones. But I think we'll get the idea today. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. And I I think it is dry, so let's go ahead and start with a blue. Now that 4th of July festivities are over with, I think that I will resume normal crafting activities and I had an idea to um, do like the cliche Christmas in July, but I kind of wanted to do, um, I wanted to do like decor slash cards, etc. in July. And not a whole lot, just a few here and there. And then the Christmas gift series, I would save for later, closer to the season. We are also going to have back to school time coming up and fall crafts. So I thought it would be fun to just kind of break Christmas into two different kinds of segments. All right. What, um, what kind of pro 
projects is everybody working on nowadays? I know that usually June ushers in all of the fun summer crafts. Some people are still doing fun summer crafts. When I know right before July hits, there's a lot of 4th of July. But tell me down in the comments what you are working on and or uh, different projects that you would like to see. I'm always happy to try out different things. I think this is doing quite well. So this is an Alta New marker and this is the VersaFine. Oh, I probably should put the lid back on, huh? This is the VersaFine and so far so good. Okay, so this particular image is now fully covered. Um, what I noticed is about right here, I have a super tiny little bleed over and right here. Um, and then there's a couple little dots here and there. So I don't know if I just didn't let the ink dry long enough or if maybe it's not quite alcohol friendly. I'm not really sure. So I think it'll require further test. This particular stem right here has had lots of time to dry. And so I'm wondering if that will play a little bit nicer. I'm just going to let this continue to dry a little bit more. And then I'm going to come back in and do some shading. And I think through the shading, I'll be able to blend out those little bitty spots. So let's choose a color for the stem. And I'll just go along here. I have definitely decided that I, <clears throat> except in like really small, tiny places, I really do like the brush tip. I feel like um, I can make it as heavy or as light as needed. So, okay, so this is my darker blue. And so far, everything is staying where it needs to be. Nothing's bleeding out over into the white of the card. So looks pretty good so far. All right, now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to use this same color. And I'm just going to go back in and do some darker lines and shade that out. So when you're using alcohol markers, um, you don't always have to blend with multiple different shades. You can actually do like a once over and then go back over a second time and or a third time to get a light, a medium, and a dark. And that's what I did here on this particular one. So I went over the whole liner once and then I went halfway a second time and then along the very bottom a third time. And that's how I got that gradient look. And it looks really, really nice once it's super... Um, settled into the paper and dry. It's just gorgeous. So just a little tip there. Okay. I'm also trying not to just color, you know, over the lines, just like all over. I'm really trying to paint in between the lines because that way in the event that they don't play nice. I haven't completely ruined my image. So I'm just going to let that sit and dry for just a moment. Let it settle into the fibers of the paper. But now you can see that you have a lighter and a mid-tone. I'm just going to go in here and kind of where each of the swirls come to a point. And I'm just going to come in and create that third deeper tone.
Okay, so our blue lollipop is done and this looks really, really great. And you can barely tell that I have a little bit of bleed over up there. And I think once everything is down on the card, you probably won't be able to tell that at all. So there we go. We've got one lollipop done. Let's do a quick stamp of that image one more time and I'm going to make sure this is down in the corner here and that way I'm just going to have a crisp black image over the alcohol ink. Just a light press and there we go. We will get on to our next color and that'll give this a little bit of time to dry. I have cleaned off our stamp and what I thought I would do would be, I'm just gonna use the same piece of paper for all three images. So I'm gonna put this one in this direction. And for this one, I'm gonna use the Memento ink. So I'm gonna put a little M right here and I'm going to go ahead and get this inked up. Make sure that's definitely well down in that corner. Okay. All right, so that's a nice good impression. I'm just going to stamp it the one time for right now and I'm going to let this dry for just a couple of minutes and then we will start coloring. And so I'll put the memento here. We've tried the Versafine and now the memento. And what I thought I would do would be on this particular one is I think I'm going to do the stem of the, of the candy with um, a Hobby Lobby marker and I'll do the shading and the coloring with the Altenew marker. So this one will have both. This was completely Altenew only. This will be both and then this one I'll just do probably Hobby Lobby and maybe an Altenew stem. I'm not sure. I'm just really trying to see which of these inks play really nice with the alcohol markers. All right, so let's go ahead and let this continue drying and then we'll get to coloring. Let's go ahead and do the stem portion. And again, this is a Hobby Lobby alcohol marker. And I'm just using the bullet end and I'm just going along the stem. Okay, and it is doing really well. There is no over bleeding out um, from the lines. So, so far so good. All right, and now we will go to our Alta New Marker and I'm basically going to do the same thing that I did over here. I'm gonna do an all over color, then I'll go back with a mid-tone and then I'll go back in with a third layer for the deep dark tones. So what I'm noticing right now is that this green is actually a really nice deep green. I don't know that I will actually need three layers. I think I will probably just go in with a, a like a mid-tone. I don't know that I'm going to need three because it's so much darker than the blue. What I'm going to have to do is um, swatch these out on, I'll just use like a little card panel and swatch them out so I can see what they look like. So far um, with this memento, I am not seeing anything like nothing at all. So I don't know guys, Memento might be my, my hands down winner other than my Cricut pens. I am actually coloring directly over the lines and I'm not getting any bleeding of any kind. So this, this is making me very happy because this actually speeds up 
coloring quite a bit. Grabbed a different lighter ink. So maybe this is the one I was thinking of earlier. And I think I'm going to use this to build in some. This is pretty dark. So I think maybe I'll do this to build in kind of some dimension. Almost like highlights, but not really. Okay, so this is our green lollipop, and the two different greens did give it some dimension. I do wish that I had done the lighter green first, but I think once this really dries out and soaks into the fibers of the paper that it'll actually look really, really nice. So overall, I'm still pretty pleased with it. And now we will do an over stamp. And then we will move on to our third. So we're using the Memento. I'm just going to give it a light press and lift up. And then you can see just like the blue, it has a very crisp black line to it. So it's just wonderful. I really like the stamp color stamp technique. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let this dry while I clean off this stamp and get the next one ready. And then we will be good to go and put all of this together. So I've opened the archival ink from Ranger. This is going to be our last one. So we had the Versafine, we had the Memento. And then I'm just going to put a little R here for Ranger. Okay, so we're going to ink this up. All right, and then I'm just going to let this dry for a moment. And then I will go ahead and start coloring this with the yellow. Let's do an Altenu stem on this one. And I'm just going to use like a pink because I don't really, I don't have a yellow in my Altenu colors yet, but that's okay. We will just default to pink because you know pink is awesome let's go in with our yellow so this is the hobby lobby pastel yellow i'm just gonna see how this works i'm very nervous about the yellow so maybe i will not get super close to the edges quite yet. I'll save that for the blending. Okay, so here is our yellow. And I can see just some of the lines are a little bit fuzzy with the yellow, so I don't know, maybe I didn't let it dry long enough. Maybe just letting it dry a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes before I add any other layer of yellow, and that way it can just let things kind of settle. Let's do some medium yellow and just build in some of these areas where I kind of left it far away from the black stamp lines. We'll just move in on those, fill that in. And these seem to, this seems to be doing okay this time. I, I don't notice it fuzzing out a little bit. So here's what I would say. I probably got a little impatient and didn't let it dry completely the first time. Kind of like my nails. <laughs> I just love not letting things dry all the way. So definitely 
let your stamping inks dry well before coloring with the alcohol markers quite well. And then I'm going to come back and blend it out with my lighter yellow. There we go. Just going to kind of blend that out. Okay, so I think our yellow is done. So this is the yellow and I think this did okay. I definitely wish I had let this, uh, the original stamped image dry a lot longer before starting in with such a light color with the yellow. So the darker inks, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but I would say with your lighter inks, definitely let the, your ink dry a whole lot longer than you think you need to, just to be on the safe side. So let's go ahead and do our over stamp. Okay, just a light press. Very nice. Okay, so here are our three additional colors to go with these. So I'm just going to do a quick mid craft cleanup and then I'm going to cut these out and we're going to get these on a card panel. I want to make these a lot of more cohesive with these two that we did in the last video. So I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to add with my um, white jelly roll pen, I'm just going to add some little highlights here and there. I don't need very many. I think my conclusion is this. One, I've got to be better about letting my stamped inks dry a little longer and I need to not be so impatient. And then I really think that for myself, based on, you know, my particular um, crafty needs and expertise level, etc. I really think the Memento and the Cricut pens have done the best. Um, they just seem to really play the nicest together. Now, all of these others, absolutely, I think the VersaFine, um, I, I think these other four are just fine. So this is what you have. Definitely use them. Just make sure to let everything dry. Don't be impatient like me. But I, I think going forward, when I do make stamped cards, I will probably count on my Memento ink or my Cricut pens. I think those seem to be the, the best, at least for what I was able to do. If you have any suggestions or um, ideas, feel free to share those down in the comments. I love learning from others. Okay, so here are some little accents. We got all of that done. Now, what I'm gonna do is I am going to basically cut these out I'm going to fussy cut these. I did not purchase the die set yet for these other images. I just have the ones for the cupcake. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. And I'm actually going to cut pretty, like, pretty close on that line, that outline. And then I can go around the edge with, um, with a marker and just kind of make it look cohesive um, so that it doesn't look so um, frayed if that is a thing. So I'm just going to cut around and probably it would be better for me to get my fine detail scissors. And something that I've learned about the fussy cutting is I, I turn my paper. I don't turn my scissors necessarily. 
and I'm just going along the black line of the image will be much better in these tiny little tight places like this. There we go, there's one. And um, you can always take a black marker and just go along the edge if you feel like you got a little too, so like right here, I'm a little bit off. So I think I will grab one of my brush markers and then just go like this along the edge of the paper. Just like that. And it just gives it a crisp look to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these cut for you and then we will work on assembling our card. So all of these are cut out and they look so cute. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on a card base. So normally I do the top folding A2 size card bases, and I'm still going to be doing an A2 size, but this time I'm going to have it be a landscape fold. So normally my card bases are cut from 8.5 by 11 paper, and I do four and a quarter by 11 and then fold them in half. This particular one, um, what I did is these are five and a half wide and then when I fold them this way and I line up those corners, crease that down really well. Okay, so then then it's going to be four and a quarter this way and five and a half this way. And so I've got this particular um, size now. And I'm doing it this way because I really think that these will fit better along here together. I'm going to bring in some patterned paper. And what I thought would be fun would be to... Um, I want a margin of white, so however wide this is. And then I thought that I would do this underneath, so it'll be like this. And then we will put these along the middle and then a sweet sentiment. We're going to have something that is four and a quarter tall. And then um, if I want it to be uh, let's do let's do three and hmm, how about we do three inches? We're gonna do three inches. Let's kind of double check here. If I want a really wide margin. I could make this a little bit shorter. Let's go ahead and cut it down a little bit more. Let's do. Um, let's do two inches. Yeah, I think that's going to be a better fit. And then I think that I will do, let's see, if that's two inches there, and then how about an inch and a half on this one? This was my thinking, is that I would have this, and then I would have this one here, and then all of these will get lined up along this way. I'm just going to use the grid lines of my mat. So we have our four and a quarter. And then if I, this would be four and a quarter. So if I bring these in, I can have a quarter on each side, but I do want them to overlap just ever so slightly. So I think we will put them like this, and those will fit perfectly. Okay, so 
So I'm just going to flip this over and I am going to get some washi and I'm going to just do some little backside taping here. This will not be seen by anybody. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring in all of our sweet little lollipops here. So it's this here like this. So we want to just see how these are going to shake out. So there's one. A little bit up, a little bit down. Okay, so it'll look something like this. I'm going to get a little bit of glue. And I'm just, on these, I'm not going to go for major dimension. I am just going to just start building this on the card base. go ahead and get these guys on here like so okay and I want it to spread out a little bit over the edge so that it'll interact with the edge of the card and then we're gonna put our orange one over here kind of in the same position about like that perfect we're just going to slide that up and down tuck that under there just like that Okay, we'll just tuck that down like that. And then I'm just going to let this particular, these blocks just sit here for just a second. These have had a chance to settle. And while I was waiting for those, I went ahead and heat embossed a little sentiment from the same stamp set. And it was the To the Sweetest Person sentiment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to cut some little tails and then we will put some ribbon. Well, well we will attempt to put some ribbon. I want to see if I can make a few tiny little bows to go on the um, stems like that you can see that so just like that and then we don't need very long tails we're just going to kind of cut those off a little bit and then we're going to get these glued down and I'm going to go ahead and tie the rest of the bows so we can get them on. Okay, all of our little bows are on. And I'm just going to let those sit for just a moment. And then we will put the sentiment on. And this card will be finished. Okay, so, so far this is what our card looks like. I think it is so cute. I love the little accents of the bows. They do have to dry for some time. But um, again, I just took a black piece of scrap cardstock and I stamped to the sweetest person using my Versamark and then I just used some white 
heat embossing powder and use my heat gun to melt that on there. So this is so sweet. I loved it. Literally so sweet. And then on the back, I just have some foam tape. So I'm going to pull this off. And then we are just going to stick this right down in the middle of our card. So let's see. I think we will just we want it to be as straight as possible and as even as possible. So I think right here will be good. We press that down. That actually catches some of the um, little ribbons, which is good because these are, I'm going to let these dry, but here we go. This is super sweet card for somebody in your life that wants to, well, that you want to give them a sweet little birthday celebration. Well, I would say that we definitely have success. And ultimately, I think what I've decided is that the Memento ink and my Cricut pens seem to work the best for me. And that could definitely just be the fact that in some cases I was rushing the drying process. All of these other ones are absolutely valid choices for stamping with um, on your panels and then coloring with alcohol markers. But just make sure that they are absolutely dry. And so with that all being said, I hope you found this particular video um, informative, helpful, inspiring, and uh, just another way to use the supplies you have or maybe experiment with new supplies that you've been wanting to get into. Go ahead and hit that like uh, button and if you haven't already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And if you found this helpful, please share this with all of your crafty friends. Until I see you in the next video, Again, enjoy your summer and happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.